Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be revisiting the 2007 Windows Vista era Hackintoshed HP Compact 6510B laptop computer. I just made that unintentionally a really long and complex name. But yes, this is the machine that I featured in this recent video up in the cards, if you missed it, where we were able to install macOS 10.5 Leopard on this machine using a modified disk containing a Hackintosh distro of sorts called iDenim. Now, if you saw that video, you'll know that we weren't able to, I mean, we were able to get Mac OS X installed, but we ran into a couple of issues when it came to drivers because we weren't able to get any sound, we weren't able to connect to the internet, and we weren't able to use the DVD drive whatsoever. Well, the reasoning for that is, is because I, I kind of messed up in the original video as more than a few of you guys pointed out. And that is on this screen right here where there's this little customize button at the bottom left. This is right before you click next where it's gonna begin copying files over to your hard drive well at the time I didn't really think too much of that button but as it turns out that's what you have to click on to be able to select the drivers for your hardware to properly install them so yeah the honest truth is I just overlooked that button entirely so if you ever install this just make sure you click on the customize button if you actually want to install drivers you know what else you shouldn't overlook today's video sponsor will note so stick around I'll be talking more about them later on in the video and huge thanks to them for supporting the channel but for for now, let's get on with reinstalling iDenub on this computer. So I've got the iDenub CD right here. We're going to pop it out and we're going to put the disc in the DVD drive, which it looks like I've already... Wait a second, what is in... I forget what this is actually. I assume... Oh, you know what? I think I know what that is. We'll just... Well, it may make an appearance later on in the video, but I know that this, at least this should be the iDenub CD. So let me just... Uh, or the DVD, rather. So yeah, we are booting off of the disk right now. We're going to press any key to start up from CD-ROM, which I got to do on the laptop's keyboard and not the USB keyboard I've got plugged into it. And just for time's sake, since I've already gone over this installation process in the last video, we're going to do a time lapse here, skip this part, and I'll come back once we are at the customized menu. Okay, so this right here is the screen that I'm talking about. So right here, there's this customize button. So you click on this and it brings up this drop down menu of packages and under patches 10.5.5 ready are all of the drivers. So you had to go through and select the drivers that pertain to your hardware. You can also get language translations, which we're not gonna bother with that. Uh, you can get additional fonts, sure we'll do that. We can get X11 as well, which we'll do that. There's also some additional applications you can get and we're just gonna grab all of these, why not? You've got VLC in here. I mean, these are all gonna be like super old versions of these applications, but why not? We'll just grab all of them. Now, the drivers is where it gets a bit interesting because not all of the drivers for the hardware in this particular laptop are available in here. The graphics driver is, so if we go under uh, graphics or under video here and we go under Intel, this machine has an Intel GMA X3100 graphics adapter. I mean, this is of course Intel integrated graphics. So we're gonna grab that, that's no problem. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, though, that is where it ends. So the video driver is the only driver that iDenim provides that corresponds to this machine's hardware. So what I did before I started even recording this video is I went on to HP's website. I also went into Device Manager when we had Windows 11 installed on this machine. And I went through the individual hardware components and I looked at the Ethernet adapter and the wireless adapter. And well, to be honest, I overlooked the sound <laughs> or the audio adapter. And I went in here when I had iDenim uh, installing in a virtual machine, I went under network and I went under Ethernet and wireless. And unfortunately, there is not a driver here that corresponds to the actual hardware that is in this machine. And oh, by the way, there's not even an optical disk driver anywhere in here. There's not even an optical disk listing, which if you remember, honestly, I don't know if it was included in the last video because there was 
a lot of footage that got cut out from that video because I kind of started working on the follow-up right afterwards and just tried to make do with what we had with the, the way that the installation was before realizing that I completely skipped past this customized menu. So I just decided to just restart and do a clean install. But anyways, in some of that unseen footage, I tried to insert a DVD, even the same installation DVD that we're using right now that it obviously is able to read from the drive, right? But OS X did not recognize the drive. It just didn't exist according to the system. So uh, that, that driver was never properly installed. Uh, and there's not even a listing for that in here. But I do have a workaround, a, a very simple workaround that we're going to be trying uh, later on in this video, which I don't really see why it wouldn't work. I also have a solution for getting this machine on the internet, and I'll touch on that later on as well. But what we're going to do now is something that I'm sure a lot of people are going to get angry at me about, especially the Hackintosh veterans in the audience. Well, you guys kind of got angry at me already for the fact that I was using iDead on one of these pre-made distros, as opposed to just doing everything from scratch and making my own installation media and uh, that is certainly a video possibility but I just wanted to try out iDenim and see how these kind of custom Hackintosh distros work so what we're gonna do is just <laughs> I know this is gonna piss people off because you're not supposed to do this you're supposed to go through here and select the individual devices that you have but we're going to just check everything here oh I know some people are already cringing oh my god what are you doing that for we're just gonna do it <laughs> we're gonna see how the system responds to it this is just installing drivers so it's just gonna have it's just there's gonna be unnecessary drivers installed uh, we're not gonna get the AMD patch because I know that we don't need that and of course the language translations we're not gonna bother with either because the default language is English so let's go ahead and click on done with everything selected, and without any further ado, let's install iDenim 1.3 Mac OS 10.5.5. So we're just about done with the installation process here, and hey, if you love installing stuff, you'll love today's video sponsor, Linode. They're a cloud computing provider giving you the tools you need to host practically anything, whether that be a website or a game server or a Linux box that you can use to stare at progress bars all day. You can do all of that and much more, because if you can run it on Linux, you can run it on Linode. And you won't break the bank doing so thanks to their affordable pricing starting at just five $5 a month. That'll get you a single core virtual machine with one gigabyte of RAM and 25 gigabytes of SSD storage. The great thing about hosting with Linode is that you get full backend access to your server. Traditional web hosting providers lock you into their platform and don't offer the same level of customizability. You don't have to be a seasoned professional either thanks to their app marketplace, where you can simply select what game server you want to host or service you want to utilize on your website, configure a few settings, and you're up and running in no time. But if you'd rather do everything yourself from the command line, you can connect via SSH, no problem. I actually used Linode a while back to set up a Minecraft server. Yeah, me, Minecraft. I used to be a Minecraft YouTuber, bet you didn't know that. In fact, I first heard about Linode through a sponsorship just like this. Yeah, these things actually work. And if you want to see how well Linode works, be sure to sign up through my link in this video's description, linode.com slash michaelmjd, to get a free $100 credit that you can use on any of their cloud computing services for 60 days. Yeah, a $100 credit for free. Just click the link down below and sign up, and huge thanks again to Linode for supporting the channel. And here we go, we got about a minute remaining. Can you believe it? Reversey, unintentional Steve Ballmer moment. Okay, anyways, uh, yeah, we we're about to finish up here. It took about uh, 15 minutes or so to install. Oh, there we go. Time remaining, nothing. No time remaining. Okay, so we're going to restart. We're using an Apple keyboard, so at least we've got something uh, Apple in this video. So that makes it a real, oh, we've got an, an Apple sticker on the back covering the HP logo. That makes it a real Mac, guys, for sure. Waiting on the machine to restart here, and we're going to see if we get sound. That would be super awesome. If one of those sound drivers that I installed, I mean, again, we installed all of them, but if one of the sound drivers happens to work with the adapter we got in here, that would be great. Oh my gosh, it's like so suspenseful. I'm just waiting for the video to load to see if we get sound. Oh my gosh, this is taking way longer than usual for this video to load. Uh, what? 
Okay, so uh, the mouse pointer, I guess, froze there. I mean, we're still like, I'm moving the mouse pointer here, but we got a mouse pointer stuck up here. That's okay. That's a great sign. Oh, this video is already off to a wonderful start. I mean, but the system is still is still responsive here. All right, well, welcome back, guys. Welcome to a, a free cam clip here. Yeah, we got the camera off the tripod and it's been a little while, so it's currently 9 p.m. I think I started this recording at like 6 p.m. And oh my gosh, guys, we've just been dealing with, uh, it's really only one issue, but everything I've tried so far has not been able to fix it. So I left it on this screen for a while and it just never got past it. So I assumed at that point that, that the system was frozen. My initial thought was, okay, something, because this did not happen before, mind you. If we take a look back at the old clip, at the old video, rather, it was able to install totally fine. We didn't have any issues. As soon as it restarted after copying all the files, it went into the introduction video. So I figured that, okay, well, the reason that this is happening is obviously due to one of those additional components slash drivers that we selected in that customized menu. So I decided, okay, I'm going to reinstall it. So I went back in and I tried to uncheck various components. And initially I tried to uncheck the fixes category, which contained all sorts of patches. Then I tried, okay, maybe it's the chipset driver. So I unchecked that. And I, I've done this a couple of times, I think four or five times so far. And I've sat through the entire installation process. And this last time I did, the only items that I had selected were the graphics driver, which we know is for the graphics adapter in this computer. I checked all of the audio drivers and all of the network drivers, and that still resulted in the same problem. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, I wonder if the graphics adapter is is triggering this. I can probably title this one, but everything went wrong because everything has gone wrong so far. I thought this was going to be a pretty straightforward like install because it worked last time. So we're going to erase the disk once more. We'll just erase it, keep the same volume name and everything. My current theory is that the video driver is causing the issue. So we're going to uncheck the video driver and just get audio and network. All right, so this is it, guys. This is the moment of truth. And for some reason, I've got a good feeling about this. I just, you know, I just have a feeling that maybe it, after all, this time was the graphics driver. Okay, we go into widescreen. Um, we get a gray screen, it goes to a, oh, oh my gosh, that was it. It was the graphics driver the whole time. Can you believe that? Are we getting sound? Oh my gosh, we're getting sound, people! I can't believe it was the freaking graphics driver the whole time. So the one thing that was labeled as like, I actually have this component in the system, it doesn't work with the freaking... Like, it, it doesn't work! I mean, okay, but whatever, at least we got... At least we got it booted up finally. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I checked the sound and all of the network drivers. So the sound works, we've confirmed that, but I don't know if the network is gonna work. We're going to say, actually, we're gonna say local ethernet and let me plug in my ethernet cable using DHCP. Network configuration failed, you won't be able to send, okay. Nope, we got nothing, Bluetooth and Firewire, that's it. If we go to about this Mac and let's go to more info to open up the system profiler. So shown Bluetooth and Firewire, airport card, no information found. We got nothing. Okay, the good news is the sound works now. So let's go into, because I, I want to actually verify this. So let's go to, uh, it's probably right in front of me. Where's sound? Sound, right over here. And... Okay, output, we've got HD audio output. Now I've got, okay, so this is what I've got. Uh, this is an audio splitter, essentially, a 3.5 millimeter splitter. And so it takes one output and turns it into two outputs. So I've got one of these outputs running to my capture device and the other to this pair of headphones so that I can actually hear what's going on. And I've got that plugged in and I had it plugged in during the introduction video and it just played through the speakers. So I've got the sound unmuted now and yeah, we try to turn it up here and it just comes out of the speakers. Although now, yeah, it just comes right out of the speaker. Oh, it's muted again. I mean, obviously the headset jack is not working. So we have no headphone jack, which honestly for an Apple 
product that isn't uh, so unheard of. Ha ha, what a joke. But uh, yeah, normally, you know, when you plug in a pair of headphones, it's supposed to automatically start sending the output through the headphones, right? Through the headphone jack on the side of the machine. Well, in this case, that's not happening. And of course, this is a Hackintosh. Again, nothing is going to be guaranteed at all, as we have already seen in the original video. But okay, so at least we have sound, though. This keeps getting muted, though. I must keep accidentally pressing it. So I want to make sure this is turned up all the way, which it is. It also looks like we don't have... Uh, let's, let me just take... I'm going to take a guess that the disk drive is not going to be recognized. So let's go back to About This Mac, and let's go to More Info to Open Up System Profiler, which we already had opened. <laughs> And let's go, to, gosh, disk burning. Yep, we got nothing. So I can put in a disk here. This is the installation disk, once again. Can put it in, and the system will not recognize it. So that driver, not loaded. And it got muted again. The sound got muted again. All right, so we're gonna start with the network. Uh, what I've got right here, is a USB to Ethernet adapter, but it's not just any USB to Ethernet adapter. This one was actually made by Nintendo. This is for the original Nintendo Wii. You know, it's a standard USB to Ethernet adapter, so in theory there's nothing preventing you from using this on another system. Uh, just the particular chipset in here works with the Nintendo Wii, and I know this because I tried to use an existing one of these that I had, and it did not work with the Wii because the chipset was incompatible. But uh, right here, we can plug this in, and I'll show you. There you go, a new network device has been detected. We just have to let it identify the network settings here. So we want using DHCP. There we go. Connected. And we'll ping google.com and we get a reply. We're on the network, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, of course, USB to Ethernet adapter. No real reason why it wouldn't work. It is able to, you know, detect USB devices and they work properly. I mean, I am using a, a USB keyboard here and everything and a USB mouse. And we're also going to use one of these, a USB DVD drive. I I went out and bought this today because I did not have one or scratch that I had one but it wasn't working so I went out and purchased this one standard USB DVD drive see what else we got we got the cable that'll help and then is this cyberlink I'm gonna guess this is yep cyberlink media suite quick start guide which tells you how to plug a free it's literally <laughs> it's literally two steps plug it in and plug it in or it doesn't say plug it in on the second part it says yeah press the button on the front that's a real great quick start guide right there I mean honestly I'm kind of surprised they include that but I guess for the people that genuinely don't know how to plug in a, a USB device there you go alrighty so with the DVD drive plugged in and ready to go it's time to install some software on this thing right and I figured we'd do a nice laid-back install of some productivity software, specifically iWork08. It was either between this and Office for Mac 2008, and I just decided we'd take a look at iWork08 because I think we may have taken a look at this before on this channel, like a while ago, but I know for sure we've not taken a look at iWork08, but we'll save Office for Mac for another day. And yes, this is, you know, your classic Apple packaging from this time, designed by Apple in California. What a classic. I'm actually going to California pretty soon for a super secret video project. I won't disclose what it is right now, but I'm very excited about it. If everything goes to plan, it should make for an awesome video. But yeah, uh, so here you go. I work away install CD. We're going to take that out. And we'll just set it here for now because we do have, I mean, we got everything in here, right, in the packaging. So we got all of the manuals. Getting started guide. So what is this, 100 and, 130 pages? 129 pages. Look at how close I was. Proof of purchase coupons for iWork08. It says, do not discard these coupons. Only original coupons can be used as proof of purchase. Right here we have the product serial number, which I'm obviously not going to show you. And yeah, there you have it. So let's uh, let's go ahead and pop in the iWork08 CD to the Dell external drive here. Oh, and by the way, one thing I do want to mention, in between these last two clips, I actually did another reinstall of iDenub here. And since we determined that the graphics driver was the problem, I ended up essentially going back in and checking everything, all those fixes, all of the additional drivers, and the additional programs. And if we go into, actually we can take a look at them if we go into Finder here, and if we go into Applications, we should see all those programs. Oh, it's probably in here in the iDenub app folder. Yeah, here you go. Oh, we're gonna definitely take a look at this. These are really old versions of these programs. Look at that old Firefox logo. This is the Tools Utility by PC Wiz Computer. And so this gives you the ability 
ability to do some system maintenance, repair permissions, modify about this Mac. Oh, this will be neat. So about this Mac does get modified, and that is something I mentioned in the previous video. This is pretty typical of these custom Hackintosh distros. So yeah, you've got that ability here to change the image and also just restore the previous one. You can set your own CPU info, so that'll be this box right here under processor. So I wonder if it'll change, like, can we do it while it's open? So let's just change this to 9,999 gigahertz. CPU info, please. Oh, you have to log out and log back in. Okay. Auto set CPU info. This function automatically changes the CPU info in the about box to the correct CPU information, which is, this is the correct CPU information right here. You can reset it to defaults, the RAM info. No symbols or it will become corrupt. Oh, I know what we're doing at the end of this video. You know what? I gotta make a note of this right now. Powered by SoftRAM. Ah, uh, yes, what a classic for this channel. So you have to log out and log back in. Let's see what else we got here. So we got Kext Helper, EFI Studio. I want to see what version of Firefox this is. Oh, and it's in Italian. Check that out. So, uh, yeah, but let's see what version this is. We are not on the internet because I don't have the USB wireless, or not USB wireless, the USB Ethernet adapter plugged in. But let's see what version this is 3.0.1 holy cow that is old but it's really neat to see it's been a little while since i've seen firefox version 3 and gosh let's see what version of skype this is this skype icon looks pretty old about skype take a deep breath gosh isn't that good advice it's like my apple watch uh version 2.7.0.330 and so because because we installed all of the network drivers we've got all these wireless utilities in here so you got this one uh for a realtek usb wireless card this one down here usb wireless utility and wlan none of these obviously work with the hardware that we have but we got them in here because we installed the drivers anyways let's take a look at iWork08. So we're gonna install it here. This package contains a program that determines if the software can be installed. Are you sure you wanna continue? Yes. iWork08 is the complete productivity suite for Mac users, whether you're creating a letter, brochure, loan calculation, party budget, or presentation. iWork08 includes numbers, pages, and keynote. Of course, the classic trifecta of Apple productivity programs. This installer guides you through the steps necessary to install iWork. To get started, click continue. I am so excited, guys, to install some productivity software 732 megabytes holy cow yeah we're gonna install that and we got no password because we're a rebel so what are the system requirements for iwork 08 you may ask well you need a macintosh computer <laughs> well we're already outside of the realm of system requirements there with a 500 megahertz power pc g4 g5 or intel core processor we meet that requirement 512 megabytes of ram this has two gigs uh, 32 megabytes of video memory. We need Mac OS 10 version 10.4.10 .10, Tiger or later. QuickTime 7.2 or later. iLife 08 recommended. We don't have iLife installed on here. And one gigabyte of available disk space, which we've got, what, 120 or 111, I think. Yeah, oh, it tells us to go to about this Mac. Well, that's not going to be useful when we log out and log back in and we get all that false information in there. Enter your purchased iWork 08 serial number. If you purchased an iWork 08 box, you'll find the serial number sticker on the installing iWork 08 booklet. Hey, I've got that right here. So let's enter this in. And there we go. Numbers. 08. Now, I'll be honest, I have not used any of the Apple productivity programs. I have used the iOS versions of them though, but I've not used the Mac versions of them. So let's make, uh, gosh, what do we want to do? Home improvement. Yeah, let's uh, let's choose that template there. Inspiration. I like the wine rack on the island. We should definitely do this. Stainless steel looks great, but it costs so much more. We should go with wood instead of tile for the floor. Ah, uh, yes. Red accents are nice. This is a bit much, but we could add some color on the walls above the cabinets. Yeah, these are some real interior design skills right here. So these people were spending $22,000 on their home renovation. We got good old plumber at noreply.com, 1234 Main Street, any town state. That's my favorite state. Let's go, you know what, let's, let's close out of this. Let's go file, close, and let's open up another template. I just love looking at these templates. They're kind of hilarious. Go back to numbers here, and let's just pick one more. Um, Dinner party. Oh, here we go. Sally's dinner party. Okay, it pulls the date. This is the correct date. Saturday, September 4th, 2021. So it looks like we got some spinach artichoke dip. We've got pasta with tomatoes. 
and we have chocolate cake. So I guess this is the appetizer, this is the entree, and this is dessert. Isn't that great? So here's the recipes, instructions. Recipe serves four, prepare for eight. We got your guest list. Who is on the guest list? Oh, look at these happy guests, man. They're so excited to be coming to Sally's dinner party. Craig Ryan, Diane Field, Richard Smith, Chris Jones, Christine Summers, Robert Sloan, Marie Scott, Kelly Johnson. All have the same phone number. I guess they all live together. So yeah, I guess that's enough numbers for now. <laughs> we'll just close out of that. Yeah, we can have... Uh, I, I feel like I'm having way too much fun with this. Like, it's just a freaking spreadsheet, and we're kind of like really diving into this here. But okay, so yeah, that is we installed iWork08. Isn't that beautiful? But before we end off the video, I do want to sign out and uh, check out. So we're going to log out and log on back in, and we are going to check out the modifications we made to about this Mac, and then we're going to try to see uh, what <laughs> what entering a symbol. Okay, so it didn't change the processor at all, or did I hit a uh, restore? Maybe I did, but memory is powered by soft RAM. That's, that's beautiful. We are going to, for CPU info, you know what, we'll do RAM info. So we'll set RAM info. We gotta enter our super secure password. Please enter your RAM info as you would like it to be displayed. No symbols or it will become corrupt. We're gonna add a ton of symbols here. Let's hit okay. Please log out and log back in. All right, logging on out. There's no turning back now, guys. No turning back now. Watch this be like super anticlimactic here. Oh, that's what it means. <laughs> Okay, so it just defaults to like the default string or about box version format string about box processor label So everything except for startup disk that still remains the same. Okay. Yeah, that was a little bit anticlimactic I was kind of expecting it to like crash or something or just refuse to, to, to load in the first place But that's what it does. So it does it does corrupt it. They were right about that but it looks like it's easily recoverable because we can just go back in here, set RAM info, and just enter in, you know, MJD. Okay. And we log on out and log back in. And yeah, there you go. It's all good. So it's nothing severe at all. It's easily reversible. But there you have it, guys. That is the long-awaited HP Hackintosh follow-up. I know this video took a little while to make, but I kind of got preoccupied with some other projects. And like I said, I've got some pretty big video projects, well, certainly one very large video project in the works that I will keep the topic of a secret for now. You guys are free to speculate as to what you think it is. But that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always, I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.